Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton. An artificial flavouring uncomfortably reminiscent of the feelings you felt whenever you saw your best friend's older sibling. And welcome to the first episode of my new Let's Play, which is of course Ghost Runner. Hopefully you've watched episode 0, which explains why I've picked this game and what it is and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I don't have to do that at the start of this first episode, so we can just dive right in with the intro cutscene. So, here we go. The remarkable thing about this intro is that it has a lot of very obvious plot elements, which somehow, on my first playthrough, I didn't realise were obvious plot elements until I'd finished the game and went back and watched this opening cutscene again. I'll handle things from here on. So yeah, you've got everything you, you want or need, really. It's actually a pretty good trailer for the game. Got your antagonist, got your protagonist, got your setup for the starting point of the plot, and you even get a little bit of an overview of what you might be doing during the game. More accurately than in a lot of these, to be honest. So, easiest thing to do is probably just to dive into the, into the actual game proper, which, if you've listened to my episode 0, you'll know I am effectively using a new game plus mode to go by level by level, but I will be playing as if I were playing through it for the first time, so I'll just zip through without bothering about collectibles, and at the end of each level I'll do a little roundup of the collectibles that we would have picked up if I had been constantly stopping platforming in order to go and find them. First moment of existence already you commit a murder. I wonder if that'll be thematically relevant at some point. Relax. Your implants are still adjusting to the software. I'm in a prison. I can calibrate only your basic protocols from in here. It'll have to suffice for now. The uprising is finished. Keymaster has won. A trespasser spotted at Metro Station. This is bad. Have to fight your way out of here. The air ducts lead to another sector. God, your software is a mess. I've rebooted your acceleration module. You should be able to squeeze through that turbine. You can use acceleration while in the air. The trespasser is in the air ducts. Careful now. They'll be waiting for you. Initiating the sensory boost. You won't last long in this state. You have to get me out of prison so I can get your software in order. I'm being held outside this dome zone. Is getting taken to the dome zone a threat or a reward? Follow the pipes to get out in the open. Use the surfaces to your advantage. Slide to gain speed. These sewers. Check the signal. They know to keep you. It's only a matter of time. 
before they breach the doors to my cell. Find me before they get inside. The lush environments are impressive just Don't for on lockdown. Each guard has a built-in lockdown chip. Saving them will unlock the doors. Tenants found outside their homes will be considered part of the rebel forces and treated as such. Games aren't exactly short on battered industrial zones, but somehow Ghost Runner really charms me, and it has a depth of detail that's just like really unusual. Lockdown lifted. Go. As you can see, I love to pop a squat at the top of the Friends leaderboard, but the competition is not exactly strong, no offence to anyone who is actually watching. Anyway, and regardless, it is time for the Collectibles Roundup. So, level 1 only has one collectible, which gives me a good opportunity to just go over the collectibles in the game in general. Um, a lot of games add collectibles as a sort of meaningless way to, to pad their game world out, and um, in terms of world building and like thematic detail, Ghost Runner is no exception. However, the fact that Ghost Runner is heavily replay based and it thoroughly encourages you to chase higher scores on every level means that just having another reason to re-explore these levels is good. So I'm glad these artifacts are here even if they don't really add much depth to the game world itself and a lot of their descriptions are kind of anodyne. One of these tabs, however, is not collectibles, this is upgrades. And uh, because this is New Game Plus, I've unlocked all of the upgrades and all of the upgrade slots, however, I'm not going to be using them until they show up in the game. Um, the one effect that I can't really affect with that is the fact that my focus regeneration will be pretty high. However, the focus regeneration will only be relevant when I'm using special abilities, which we haven't quote unquote unlocked yet, which is why I'm not using them. This grid is actually divided in quarters and uh, there's four major points in the game when you unlock a new quarter of this grid, which also unlocks a bunch of new new power-ups that you can you can slot into it. It's actually really cool. Um, it's a really fun way to have your your to add a little bit of detail to coming up with your build, the fact that you have to figure out how to Tetris style slot the power-ups that you want into the grid. Um, some of them are easier, some of them are a bit harder, so that'll come up again in uh, some at some point. <laughs> so yeah, um, there's a lot of collectible skins for your sword throughout the game. As you can see, there's 36 in the game. These locked ones, all of the ones that are locked are DLC. Um, all of the ones that can be unlocked through gameplay, I've unlocked. There's also a few seasonal ones, uh, which are kind of cute. I love the way they've managed to visibly catch the feel of a decal applied to metal. It's just kind of a hard effect to pull off half the time, but it really does look like um, those ridiculous, like tactical prints that people apply to their to their overbuilt hobbyist assault rifles. Uh, if you if you go to certain sides of the internet, I'm actually very fond of this one. I think. Well, okay, we all got. You know, this is a good place to do it because this won't come up in an episode. If I remember correctly, this sword you unlock for. Uh, completing the wave survival bonus mode, which won't be in this let's play, it's beyond the scope of this essay. <laughs> but yeah, so this is the starter sword, this is what we begin the game with. Everyone always gets that for free, so I might as well count it here. This is the Surugi GR. There's also a bunch of gloves, these are also locked behind uh, just cosmetic DLC, except for the default glove, which we get on level 1, and the survivor glove, which we get also for doing that wave survival mode. And the codex is just a whole bunch of items scratched from the game world and audio logs relating to the backstory, because if there's two things a game has to have, it's collectibles and audio logs that explain the backstory. So the first one is this lovingly rendered butterfly knife, which I notice has like a, a trench knife grip attachment, which I don't know if real butterfly knives have ever. I imagine it would get in the way of the like flick move to activate the butterfly knife. As the base became more and more unstable under the Keymaster's rule, carrying personal weapons went from a rare quirk to an everyday necessity. In some sectors, people won't leave their homes without one. Anyway, that's the roundup for level 1. Time to head on to level 2. Gonna be pretty quiet on this one. Prison towers up ahead. Hope you're not afraid of heights. 
This level's almost entirely exposition. But it's also pretty short. Now the exposition really kicks off. Prisoner released. Ah, free at last. Pleasure to meet you. Face to face, that is. Now. Let's take a look inside. This may feel a little strange. Welcome to Cyber Void. Time to fix you up. You can talk here, by the way. Who are you? You can call me Architect. Who am I? You're a ghost runner. Number 74, to be precise. That will have to do for now. Your physical body is vulnerable. Time runs slower here, but we should still hurry. Just keep moving. I will take care of your recalibration. I remember a fight. Others like me. A fall. You've been cast down from Dharma City to the base district. It's a miracle to survive a fall like that, even for someone like you. A ghost runner? Yes. You were bodyguards, peacekeepers, arbitrators, and anything else we needed you to be. You tried to stop the coup. There was a woman. The name is Mara, or the Keymaster, as she calls herself now. Twenty years ago, she stood against me. It was you I was trying to save. You failed. I... died. My body did, anyway. Thanks to the precautions I had taken, I'm still here. Although this form has its limitations. Are you an AI? You could say that. You could also say Dharma Tower is a skyscraper. Technically correct. What is the tower, then? Humanity's home. A megastructure that once housed a million. It had been under my care since its creation. Almost a century ago, I served the people, kept them safe, maintained the shelter I provided. But Mara had her own plan. She became the sole ruler of Dharma Tower, ruining what I've built, bringing us back to the verge of extinction. A lot of symbolically weighted nouns getting thrown around. Also, FYI, you can't dash, air dash, or wall run in the void. The jumping puzzles are mandatory. Why can't this place be normal? Oh, it's perfectly normal. It's you that has become incompatible. The incompetent repairs you were subjected to made you divergent. You no longer function like a ghost runner is supposed to. But we'll change that. Who repaired me? That would be the Climbers. A group of rebels that tried to oppose Mara. Where are they? Dead, I'm afraid. They'd been killed before I managed to contact you. But there's no time to worry about them now. We're almost done here. Press on. How did she manage to win? I was stabbed in the back. We both were, you and I. Who was she? Was? A dear friend. A trusted partner. Brilliant scientist. 
Who is she now is the question you should be asking. And you wouldn't like the answer. No one among the people of Dharma Tower would. I need more answers. And you will get them. For now, trust me, the Keymaster is your enemy and a tyrant. What do you want me to do? Kill Mara, of course. To be able to do that, you'll have to relearn a few things and tweak your performance. But first, jump. We need to get back, and it's much quicker this way. Well, there you have it. Level 2 completed. Also, all of these levels have names. I should probably be mentioning them because I don't know that it'll actually show up in game anywhere. The first level was An Awakening, and this was A Look Inside. Nice, hearty, relevant titles. You may also notice that I beat my own record for the very least time and possibly also for Death Song on this one, which would be very impressive if it wasn't level 2. So, before we dive into the dizzying heights of level 3, The Climb, it will, of course, be time to have a quick look inside. There's only one collectible in level 2, so we'll zip through this real quick and then I'll join you again next episode. We've got the Propaganda Flyer, Higher Production Spread Satisfaction. I actually think this is one of the least interesting examples of um, graphic art produced as art extant within the world presented. A lot of the stuff on the walls as you explore the game world is really interesting and can actually tell us a lot about that game world. I'll try and point it out if I can find some good footage, but um, otherwise don't expect that. Thousands of these are still distributed all over the base, although after 20 years of the Keymaster's reign, nobody really believes her promises of a better life awaiting in the future. Let's get you pretty standard cyberpunk dystopia, then there's a coup and then everything gets worse, but I do like the way that cyber- but I do like the way that Ghost Runner plays with some of those ideas, which I will talk about in later, in later episodes, because of course, uh, when I start dying more, which will definitely happen when we get into some of the tougher levels later on, I'll have a lot more time uh, with no NPC voiceovers for me to wax lyrical about what I like about this game and what I think it does that's clever or new or interesting or just solidly executed things that are not clever and new and interesting. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, join me again next time if you want to see some more kinetic murder action. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.